Hi, welcome back to my channel and a new video today. I'm going to be giving you my top 10 picks for my favourite horror movies from the 2020s so far. And I decided to make this list just because I love making them. It's good fun. I love to go back and compilate all the best of movies and make these lists to share with you guys. And you know how it is in January. It's never a particularly exciting, exciting month for new releases. There's nothing much of interest going on right now. So I hope you enjoy Enjoy this list I've made for you today. Uh, going back over these, I've realised 20, the 2020s have actually been pretty strong for horror movies, I think. You know, this is a, a pretty decent list, if I don't say so myself. So, of course, as always, do join me down in the comments and let me know whether you agree or disagree with my picks and offer up some of your recommendations as well. Of course, like always, this is my personal opinion, just my 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 personal top 10 favourite horror movies we've had from the last few years. And these are all movies that I definitely consider to be horror. You know, there's always a little bit of debate about if something's partly sci-fi, partly thriller, does that fully count? But I think if you were marketing these movies to people, these would be aimed at horror fans, I, I think. So with that all out of the way, let's get into my list. So my number 10 choice is Titan. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly because this is a French film and was directed by Julia de Cornell. And for people who might recognise her name, it's because she directed Raw from a few years ago. I think it was 2017. And I personally loved that movie. I thought it was very twisted, very unique. And it's one that really stuck with me. It was something quite a bit different uh, to things I'd seen in horror previous to that. And to see that she was coming back to make a second movie, unconnected events, just a new story here. I was really intrigued to see it. And this is a movie that I watched. And I, I don't really know how to describe the story and really sell it to you, but it's, oh, it's about basically a very unconventional relationship between these two very broken people uh, for different reasons. Uh, and through a set of circumstances, they're led together. You've got this one girl who has had this brain injury when she's a child. It's obviously set her off on a bit of a strange path where she's become uh, quite psychotic in a lot of ways. Uh, and she ends up meet, uh, meeting this guy who's grieving uh, his son who's gone, who's been missing for like 10 years. And they end up having this uh, unusual relationship. And yeah, it's a film that just the more I've thought about it, the more it stuck with me. It is very twisted. Uh, it's a very unusual and bizarre film. But something about the whole atmosphere of it, the two performances from the leads are absolutely amazing. Like when you watch uh, the main uh, the main girl that's cast here, that her transformation between the beginning and the end is just unbelievable to see. So yeah, Julie DeCorno, she cast great leading women in these films. And uh, I really enjoyed this one i say enjoy it. it's a very dark movie uh it's one that's definitely stuck with me and i've thought about a lot since watching it uh, it's one that definitely won't be for everyone just because it is very weird uh, it's very weird very dark um but it's there's something quite interesting about it it's certainly unique so if you like that kind of art house a little bit more experimental stuff and you enjoyed raw i would definitely recommend giving this one a go because i thought it was really well done my number nine is pearl of course ty west's second piece of his trilogy that he's working on currently i believe we're getting maxine out later this year so i'm really excited for that because his first two entries in this trilogy have just been fantastic. Um, this is quite a different film to X in a lot of ways. It's more of a, a character study. You know, it's following Pearl when she's much younger, set back in like the 20s, I believe. And you're kind of watching her on her journey from being this kind of, this farm girl who lives a secluded life with very manipulative and controlling parents who are a little bit odd. And it's her kind of manoeuvring this situation and also wanting to get out of her current life by becoming famous, becoming a star. And she starts to go down the very psychotic route when she realises she maybe doesn't have what, what it takes to do that. And the thing that really shines about this film, of course, is Mia Goth. Like, she's definitely one of the best actresses in horror today. She's so intriguing to watch. 
she's absolutely terrifying. <laughs> she's, she's just weird, you know, something weird about her and yeah, something very unsettling. I think she's a, a very interesting actress. It's funny when you see her in interviews because she comes across quite timid and quite shy in a lot of ways and suddenly in the movie she's just absolutely explosive and just a joy to watch so even for her performance alone I think this one's really worth watching and I thought it had a great build up to a very sort of unsettling and creepy climax as well so really enjoyed Pearl and I'm very excited to see how he concludes this trilogy with Maxine. My number eight choice is Possessor. And this is one that might come into that category of, is it really a horror film? It's kind of like a sci-fi thriller type thing. But it's definitely uh, portrayed and done in quite a scary way. For me anyway, I personally thought it was. So that's why I'm putting it here on this horror list. And this was a very interesting story. I decided to watch this because I did see Infinity Pool last year which was directed by Brandon Cronenberg, of course. And this was the movie he'd done prior to that, and I just missed it for whatever reason. So I decided to go back recently and watch this. So this was the last movie that got added to this list. And I just thought this was absolutely fantastic. I thought it was a really interesting sci-fi concept. This, uh, this technology was basically is a company of assassins where they are given this technology that allows them to go into other people's bodies to carry out assassin uh, assassinations. So it's like they would go into somebody who works or is in a relationship or is close to somebody that needs to be assassinated and they carry it out through them. And the main uh, the main character, this woman play, played by Andrea Riseborough, she's the, the woman that goes into these people's bodies to, to carry out these murders. And it's basically showing her kind of more and more disconnection she's getting from real life, from her own life, her own family, because she has to kind of imitate somebody else's life to really fit into this role, uh, to be able to get into situations where she can assassinate these people. So it's dealing with a lot of very complex themes in a really interesting way. It's uh, it's a very psychological film and uh, really does get you thinking. It's, it's one of those movies, I love kind of weird sci-fi concepts like this and showing kind of technologies we may have in the future and how they might be used. So even though it is a little bit crazy what's going on here, you could, you could see something like this potentially happening in the future. So I thought it was very interesting to watch. And, and as I say, it is done in a way that feels like a horror film to me. A lot of it's really unsettling, got a really like intense atmosphere as well. And I was really impressed by this one. I'm actually, I'm kind of already wanting to watch this one again. I might do a, a an individual review for this film because I thought it was fantastic. So that's my number eight choice, Possessor. Number seven is Scream 5. I know this might not be very popular. I don't think many people have really fully got on board with these newer Scream films, but for me, I mean, I love the Scream franchise. The first one is maybe my favourite horror film ever. I absolutely love it to death and all of the franchise films I have a lot of fun with. Even stuff like 3, I, I still really enjoy. And to see that we're going to reboot it all these years later, you've got an interesting and decent new cast here, I think, as well, you know, with Melissa Barrera, Jenna Ortega. I think um, it, was, it really worked. And it's a shame, to be honest, that given all the events that have happened, that we're not going to get a Screen 7 like or a continuation of these films. I think it's a real shame given everything that's happened. But Scream 5, I thought it was a great return to form. I, I loved the build-up of the film. I loved the vibe, the atmosphere, the dialogue. It was all... It's quite witty. It was fast-paced. And I thought the kills were really well done. I loved seeing these... Uh, the kind of old characters getting back together with the new. I thought what they did with the character of Dewey as well, I really liked. Like, Because some of the films, he, get, he got a little bit... They, they started to kind of do over and over again with him the same thing like his relationship with Gail they kept doing that same thing and whilst they do do a little bit of that here I do still feel like he really gets his time to shine and you get to see him from a different perspective where he's a little bit older now he's a he's a little bit more bitter about the world whereas you know at the start he was this kind of young naive and very optimistic guy and now he's a little bit more broken down because of all of the events that have happened to him uh, throughout his life uh, living in Woodsboro and yeah just something about the film it just absolutely flies by with me I have a great time with it love all the, the actors and, and the people in it and yeah I thought I thought it was a really great scream entry maybe my second favourite it's kind of tied with the second one for me I do think the 
the final act goes is it's not the best. I think some of the reveals, I, the reveals were all right. I didn't mind who ended up being the killers, but I do think one of them ended up being quite predictable. I think they set it up a little bit too obviously, where it's almost like when you think about who's actually left, who can it really be? So, um, you know, that was a little bit predictable and maybe could have been done a bit better. But I've seen it a few times now and I really enjoy it every single time. So definitely coming in my top 10 of this list. My number six choice is The Night House. This was one when it came out. I didn't know anything about it uh, until someone actually recommended it to me. It's directed by David Bruckner and... The story here is basically about this woman who is living in this secluded lake house and her husband recently committed suicide for unknown reasons to her. So she's kind of going through this grieving period and trying to piece together and make sense in her mind what could possibly have led to this. And, and on from there, you get all these kind of weird events that start happening to her. And she starts to find all these little bits of information that she didn't know about her husband that come to light and basically end up sending her down the rabbit hole where she can't make peace with it without finding out what was really going on. Like he was out meeting these other women and he was building another lake house and you know, she meets some of her neighbours that claims he was doing unusual stuff and it all gets a bit strange and she can't let it go so she just has to find out what was going on with him and, and it leads her to some very dark places and I just absolutely loved everything about the way this movie was done as a horror film it's genuinely quite scary there's some really good creepy moments that really send shivers up your spine i thought it was very effectively done i liked the direction they went with it as well it kind of really surprised me a lot of moments there's some really unexpected moments in terms of direction with the story it goes to so uh, yeah you won't really be able to guess where this one's going and i really liked the way it wrapped up as well i just think that also rebecca hall uh, as the lead woman, her performance, absolutely amazing. You know, she's great at playing these complicated characters who are kind of dealing with difficult times in life. I just think she kind of conveys that in, in a really in a interesting way where you can tell it's somebody who's really going through something and she's trying to cope uh, whilst also trying to stay functional and doing things in life as well. So I think she always does an amazing job of those kind of roles. There's, uh, there's obviously the reason, reason why she gets picked for similar characters like this because she's just so convincing in the roles that she plays. So very interesting little horror movie. Back from... I believe it was in 2021 now. So if you didn't see this one when it came out, please go and give this one a shot. I think it was uh, extremely well done. My number five pick is X. And of course, this is Ty West's first movie of the trilogy, as I was just talking about with Pearl. And I just had so much fun with this one. It got me at the right time. Everybody was talking about it. And I set it up on a Friday night, uh, sat back and, enjoy, and enjoyed the show. And what a film. I thought in terms of a, in terms of a slasher horror film, what more could you really do to make it more exciting than this? It's kind of, it's a throwback to the sort of 70s style horror movies like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It's kind of doing something diff uh, something similar, sorry, to what Wrong Term was trying to do with those 70s horrors like um, uh, Deliverance, that's what I'm thinking of. Yeah, so it's kind of that version of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, but just done way better here you know with kind of the modern filmmaking techniques much better acting uh just much more tightly paced and uh yeah i i, I loved this film again of course mia goth in the leading role as um maxine i think her name's max yeah it is maxine in this one and also playing the old woman as well and yeah i just think the you never really know where this one is going because it sets up that you know, this group of characters are going away to film this porn film on a ranch and there's these two unusual old people living over the road, kind of allowing them to, uh, allowing them just to get on and obviously pay them off for, uh, for doing the shoot there. And then things start to get very crazy at the halfway mark and yeah, it goes in some wild directions and I just had an absolute blast with the movie. So if you like slashers, if you haven't seen X, you absolutely need to get on this one now. I'm sure you're going to love it. My number four choice is Quiet Place Part 2. And I think I might have spoken about this before, but I am a huge fan of the first Quiet Place. I, I think it's 
definitely in my top 10 horror movies of the last 10 years, I would say. I really loved that film. I actually liked it even more on rewatch. <laughs> it was one of those films that I saw in the cinema back when it came out. And, you know, because of because it's all around being silent and the atmosphere, you end up just kind of getting distracted by all of the little noises and stuff. So I, I couldn't fully get into the film for whatever reason. I definitely enjoyed it. Um, but it wasn't like a 10 out of 10 for me. And the next time that I watched it, I actually re-watched it the night before going to see part two. And I loved every single second of it. I thought it was just absolutely fantastic. So I was really excited to go and see the second one. And I, I was so pleased with the job they did with it. And I think my only worry going into it was, was it just going to be the same thing again? You know, it's like a lot of movies. It sets up this world. Uh, you know, it sets up that there could be sequels. And you worry it could just be the same thing again and again. But they found a really interesting way to further flesh out the story of this family of characters. Of course, bringing, bringing um, Killian Murphy into the mix as well. Fantastic actor. And he played a really interesting character here who kind of ends up meeting up with this family and going on a bit of a, a journey with the daughter. And I really loved um, their connection they had. Um, you know, as they were going, kind of almost like almost like a replacement father figure uh, in some ways to her within this world, of course. And yeah, I just really got engaged with the story here. I loved they showed that little snippet of the start, uh, you know, the opening sequence where it's kind of showing how the events began for this family. I thought that was a really intense sequence. I really liked that. And also introducing that, you know, kind of a common theme you have a lot of apocalyptic films where it's, you know, you start to see other bits of humanity that have broken down, societies break down, people starting to act, you know, like they're only out for survival and that is now the only concern. So uh, it, it's a very, very good film. Lots of interesting uh, sequences and elements brought into this here. Not quite as good as the first one, I didn't think, but as far as sequels go, uh, I, I, couldn't, I can't say a bad word about it. I had a great time with it and I'm really looking forward to the third part we're getting this year. Okay, at this point we're getting into some seriously good horror films now. My number three choice is Talk To Me. And I'm not going to go into this one in too much detail just because I've already talked about this film to death. I've done a review for it. It was in all of my top lists of the year, you know, top movies of the year, top horror of the year, everything like that. So you can go and see all my thoughts on that. I will leave a card uh, if you want to hear my in-depth thoughts on the movie. But I just think this was such a breath of fresh air in terms of a horror movie coming out within the possession genre. Uh, you know, one that I was very much burnt out on. I feel like a lot of the re releases we get within this are very generic. And to hear that we were having some first-time filmmakers giving it a go I didn't think that I thought the trailer looked okay but nothing like nothing particularly special so I didn't have the highest of expectations going in and honestly I was blown away by this after seeing it I just thought it's a very short sharp you know well paced horror movie with really great characters really gets you invested in the story uh, and sets up a load of very effective and creepy sequences uh, with a very cool idea for a horror story. So yeah, I loved everything about this one. I'm sure most of you watching this list will have seen Talk To Me by now, but I absolutely agree with all of the praise that it's gotten. I'm definitely uh, amped up to see a sequel for this. I think it's, I'd be very interested to see where they go next. I really liked how this one ended as well. It was quite left on a bit of a down note, quite a dark ending, but I, I thought it suited where the story was heading. So I loved what they did with that. And, you know, dealing with a number of themes in here as well. So a, a movie that's, you know, it, it's a short horror movie. It's fast paced. It's all about the horror, the scares, but it, it leaves you with some things to think about as well and some characters you can really connect with. So a little bit of a standout for me, uh, definitely within this subgenre of horror. And, and it also for me, it was easily my favourite horror movie of 2023 last year. So fantastic movie, easily my number three. It was so difficult deciding between these top two. I love both of these movies to death. I think... My number two choice, if I was going off first time watch, this one would be number one. But I've seen both of these a handful of times each now. And I think I'm, I'm happy with this order of my top two here. So my number two choice is Barbarian. And 
This is one of those movies. It was one where I went to the cinema. I was in a screening on my own, uh, which was a very cool experience as well. So to see this horror movie on my own, it's one of those where instantly you're absolutely gripped and you do not want to take your eyes off the screen for a single second. You know, there's a lot of movies out there where, you know, you look back on the experience afterwards and you really liked it, or, you know, you, you're interested in the story and you're happy to go along with it. And then there's those movies that just have your completely undiluted attention for the entire runtime, uh, where you're just like, I'm not going to the bathroom, I'm not going to go and top up my popcorn, I'm not going out for anything, I need to see every moment of this. And that was barbarian for me, it was... A very intriguing setup, you know, this girl that arrives one night at an Airbnb, somebody else is already there, booked in on the same night, it's all a little bit strange. He invites her in and they're kind of getting to know each other and kind of understanding what might have gone on in this situation. And craziness ensues from there. I'm actually not going to spoil anything about this film here because... If you haven't seen it, you have to go into this one blind. It, it deserves to be seen that way because it's quite an experience for a horror film. And, you know, it pulls the rug out from under you so many times. So many surprises, so many twists. You'll never guess where it's going. I even really liked some of the more comedic elements they brought in in the second half as well with Justin Long's character. I thought that worked really well. Uh, but also, this is a, a very full-on horror movie as well. A lot of really creepy stuff in here, especially in that first act. You know, once they find the little basement area, that's all I say. I thought, oh, this was... It was quite a tough watch in the cinema alone there. I was like, damn, this is pretty intense. So, absolutely love the movie to death. And as I say, if I was going off a first-time viewing, I would probably have put this as number one because when I came out of this, I just... I wanted to instantly put the, put the camera up and just talk about to everyone how much I love this film. So, it, it's a brilliant horror movie and I highly encourage anybody who has not seen this to check this one out. My number one choice though, the best film I think we've had yet in the 2020s is The Invisible Man uh, from 2020. This one was directed by Lee Whannell who's only got a few uh, credits to his name in terms of directing at this point. Of course a lot of people know him for working with James Wan on Saw. And I was very interested to see what he was going to do with the story. I think it's a very intriguing story. And I just think this movie works on every level. I've loved it more every time that I've seen it. And yeah, again, it's like a horror sci-fi. Again, it's another one I don't want to spoil too much about it, just in case you haven't seen it. But it's basically about a woman who's living in a situation of domestic abuse where... You know, she's kind of been planning her escape and one day makes that escape, makes a run for it, moves in with one of her friends. And then it's basically tackling that kind of story and themes of how the people who might have abused you in your life can actually stay with you long after they're gone. Because in this story, it's set up that the husband commits suicide as a result of this. Uh, and, and she's still left with this sort of lingering paranoia and worry about everything that she does and you just get to see a story here where it shows how much how many areas of a person's life can be affected from getting out of a situation like this you know how it relates to you know her interactions and the relationship she has with her family members how a lot of those end up breaking down because of the problems that she's had as a result of this relationship i think it tackles those themes extremely well and then when you just get into the more horror side of this where obviously a lot of her paranoia and fears are brought into reality in this story i, I just think some of the best scares and best sort of tense sequences i've seen in a horror film maybe ever uh the one scene in particular the attic you know where she goes up to the attic to find the phone that's ringing my god that is uh that scene almost gave me a heart attack <laughs> uh, unbelievably good it's just it even got me even on a rewatch i knew it was coming and it still got me it's just uh it's an unbelievably well done jump scare this is like a jump scare just done perfectly so absolutely love that about it i love where the story goes i i love how it kind of develops as it goes on with certain other characters uh that get involved in the situation and yeah it, it's so intense you're like you're really praying for this character to find a way out 
and overcome this situation. I thought uh, the lead woman was played uh, amazingly by Elizabeth Moss as well. So I, I thought this was a fantastic horror film. Again, one that I, I think rewards further watches. You know, more and more rewatches, I tend to get a bit more out of it. I see a little bit more detail that, that Lee Winnell put into this and it, it just works on so many levels I love this one to death so that's going to be my pick for my favorite horror movie we've had from this decade so far so that's my top 10 list for you as I said please do join me in the comments let me know which of my choices you agree with and offer up all of your recommendations as well for horror movies that maybe I've never seen before maybe I haven't heard of that would have made your top 10 list leave all your thoughts down below and also please do consider subscribing to my channel if you've been enjoying my videos I've got a lot of good stuff coming for you soon working on a lot of reviews and videos and top 5 top 10 lists everything good like like that so if you've been enjoying my uh, my content that I'm giving you please subscribe hit the notification bell uh, and look forward to more videos from me soon thanks so much for watching this video and I'll see you next time